a quick programming note. Only going to be one video today and tomorrow, like most of the country. Got to get the house prepared for these sub-zero wind chills that we're going to have over the next four or five days. It's not expected to get above freezing until at least, I think, Monday. Also got some last minute Christmas shopping to do. I got a plumber coming tomorrow to fix some issues that we're having. More than likely going to take Saturday and Sunday off. You guys are going to be too busy to be watching me anyway. Traffic slows down dramatically here on YouTube this time of year, but should be back to our regular schedule on Monday. All right, let's get into this. When you're the parents of a student athlete who is considering which program that he's going to play for, the things that you consider are vastly different than what your son is thinking about. Your son's thinking, where can I get the most playing time? What coach can prep me best to go pro? Where can I go and compete for a national championship? Those are the aspects that are most important to your kid. They're important to you as well, but as the parent, you're looking at the bigger picture. As a parent, you know the odds of your kid making it to the NFL or the NBA are slim. You have a better chance of hitting the lottery than becoming a professional basketball player. Now, if we're talking about the WNBA, completely different story. You could be doing community service, picking up trash on the side of the road. One of the managers of one of the WNBA dumps passes by, notices how you never miss the bag when tossing in the trash. You have just earned your spot on the back of a garbage truck. But it's completely different in the NBA. Even if your son leaves college and gets drafted in the first or second round, he may never touch an NBA court. Now, when considering colleges, you're also looking at where he will get the best education. You know all it takes is one injury and his basketball career is over before it starts. You want your child to have this free college education to fall back on. Shaq. Shaq was one of the most dominant centers of all time. You know what his mom cared about more than basketball? His education. Once his NBA career ended, Shaq actually went back to school, finished his college degree. When he left LSU early for the NBA, he had promised his mother he would go back and finish school. Now, as the parent of a student athlete, one of the most important things to consider when choosing schools is who is going to be leading my kid? Who's going to be looking out for him? Who will help him grow into a man? You're looking directly at the coach he's going to be playing for. Coaching at the college level, I don't care if it's a major D1 program like LSU or Booger A&M. Coaching at the college level, completely different than coaching in the NBA. When you're coaching in college, you're not only responsible for winning games, you're also responsible for the development of young men. Parents who have been raising their kid for 18 years, they are trusting you to almost be like a surrogate parent. You're expecting the coach to not only turn your kid into a better basketball player, but also turn him into a better man. Many athletes who make it big professionally, they will often credit their college coaches for the development they received at the college level. For the last four years, Jawan Howard has been responsible for developing young men at Michigan. Problem is, the person involved with the program in need of the most development is Jawan Howard himself. This is a 49-year-old man with the emotional maturity of a teenager. Remember when you were a teenager, you tended to act first and think later? As you get older, you develop the ability to think first, act later. Jawan Howard, he never hit this level of maturity or emotional control. Earlier this year, I think it was back in February, I told you guys Jawan Howard should be fired. They were losing a game against Wisconsin. Under a minute left with a double-digit lead, Wisconsin coach Greg Gard called two timeouts. Now, most of us consider this garbage time, but as a coach, this is a time where you can get young players game experience. Guys who aren't seeing the floor now, but they could be contributors next season. As a coach, Jawan Howard, he should understand this, but he saw this as a sign of disrespect. He believed Greg Gard was trying to extend the game and shove the loss in his face. After a basketball game, it is customary for both head coaches to meet at the scorer's table and shake hands, congratulate each other. Jawan Howard, his hands were definitely shaking, but they were shaking in anger as he slapped Greg Gard in the face with enough force to knock a flea off an elephant's ass. Watch it for yourself. Oh, my goodness. 
Michigan should have fired his ass before he walked off the court. Now, I rarely say people should be fired, lose their jobs. I'm a big believer in second chances. Basketball is an emotional game. Sometimes fights are going to break out, but coaches are not supposed to be involved. 19-year-old kid loses emotional control, punches another player. I expect it. Don't kick him off the team. Suspend him for it. But when your head coach is the instigator, it is a completely different story. It is a problem. Now, if this had been the first incident for Jawan Howard, Michigan, they could justify a suspension. Jawan Howard, he was suspended for the rest of the regular season, but he was allowed to return for March Madness. It was absolutely disgraceful. It was bullshit, to be honest with you. Jawan Howard showed no remorse for this altercation. Not only did he show no more remorse, he tried to lie about it. In his post-game press conference, he tried to claim that this was an act of self-defense. Self-defense? From what? Also, this was not the first time Jawan Howard lost emotional control. Hell, it wasn't even the second time. He damn near started a riot during the 2020 Big Ten tournament. The fucking head coach being held back by 19, 20-year-old kids because he's trying to start a fight. During a game against Iowa, there was an errant pass that ended up rolling towards the Michigan bench. Now, the ball was in bounds. It was a live ball. Apparently, Jawan Howard thought he was an active player. He steps onto the court, grabbing the ball like he's about to set up an alley-oop. In all my years watching basketball, I had never seen anything like it. Now, this particular incident, you could write this off as a simple brain fart. If, if Jawan Howard didn't have a history of losing control. So we have three separate instances of Jawan Howard losing control of his emotions in the span of two years. Yet somehow, he's been allowed to keep his job. I don't know if Michigan's afraid to fire him because he was part of the Fab Five in the early 90s. I don't know if they're afraid to fire him due to racial concerns. Whatever the reason, Jawan Howard has been given multiple opportunities to change his behavior. Now, we are just over a month into the regular season, and it is abundantly clear Jawan Howard hasn't changed a damn thing. This is what happens when you don't hold people accountable for their actions. But KC, he was suspended last year for the rest of the regular season. And so, he should have been fired. At minimum, he should not have been allowed to return for the Big Ten tournament in March Madness. This punishment, this suspension, it was essentially a week without pay. Michigan refused to hold Jawan Howard accountable. And look at what happened now. We are barely into the regular season and we already have another occurrence. Last night, Michigan was playing North Carolina. Seconds to go in the second half, officials made a call that Jawan Howard didn't like. He decided to let the officials know about it, which is fine. That's fine. That's what your head coach is supposed to do. You don't want your players late in the game arguing with officials and possibly getting a technical foul. Let your coach handle it. The arguing with the officials, that was not the problem. The problem was how Jawan Howard reacted to his own player. Watch for yourself. Get up with Clarence Armstrong as well. And now talking to Doug Sermons. Did you see it? He incidentally elbowed the kid in the face, and then he told him, don't you fucking touch me. Now, I'm not inside the mind of the player, but I would imagine he was trying to restrain his head coach because of his past behavior, the history of losing his emotions and escalating a situation. Now, was this incident as bad as what happened with Wisconsin? No. Was it as bad as the riot he tried to start at the Big Ten tournament? No. But this is a pattern. This is a pattern of bad behavior over and over and over. 
If I had a kid playing for Jawan Howard at Michigan, you know what I'm thinking right now? What the hell's going on behind closed doors? What the hell's going on during practice that we don't see? How's he treating my son when cameras aren't around when there's not a national television audience? This dude loses control in front of a million people. You expect me to believe he has the ability to contain his emotions when no one's watching? Jawan Howard has no business coaching young men at the college level. It's not supposed to be the player restraining the coach. The coach is supposed to restrain the player. What is it going to take for Michigan to realize that this dude's a loose cannon? Jawan Howard is a liability. What's it going to take? He's already proven he's not afraid to get violent. If this dude is willing to slap a coach on national television, you think he's not willing to get rough with his players? How much evidence does Michigan need to realize this is a serious problem? 49-year-old men do not act this way. 49-year-old men don't slap someone in the face because they call two timeouts late in the game. It's not going to get better. It's only going to get worse. Guys like Jawan Howard, they don't just wake up one morning and become emotionally stable. This will happen again. The question is, how bad is it going to be the next time? But give me your thoughts. Jawan Howard, once again, loses emotional control. Now, I doubt Michigan does anything about what happened last night. Hell, he slapped a guy in the face and got a slap on the wrist. Will we see Jawan Howard lose control again this season? How bad will this get? You let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.